Hey everybody, Susie Q here and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. Today we're going to be taking a look at these paradise fish. I wanted to talk a little bit about the paradise fish. Macropotus apercularis, and I'm sure I butchered that. But we've been calling this in the hobby the paradise fish or the paradise gourami. It's also referred to as, you know, one of the founding fish of our hobby. Beautiful. Still is beautiful. Um, a French soldier, Geralt, brought into the hobby 1869. They're omnivores, and they'll get about two to two and a half inches big, uh, and they like slow-moving water. They really don't need a heater as long as they could stay between 72. So normally with this, if it, these were in my fish room, I would not need a heater at all because that fish room is right about 70, 75 degrees. So it'd be perfect. But this is, this room here is just, it gets a tad bit cool on certain nights, so I wanted to make sure that they weren't getting too cold. And they can live between like 8 and 10 years. They can live a long time. And they got a gorgeous blue body with like an orange tail and orangish reddish stripes throughout the whole body. The male has, has elongated um, caudal fin and an anal fin. So it's pretty easy to tell the difference between male and female. And when they're in mature and breeding mode, the female's filled with eggs. So she's a little, you could tell that she's filled with eggs. And the male gets, all his colors get deep and rich. So it almost looks like royal blue and orange gorgeous. And the female gets a little more pale. She gets almost white while they're breeding. They're kind of aggressive fish, especially during breeding mode. And if there's a bubble nest being made, the male is very protective of his bubble nest, even against the female. And the bubble nest is really saliva-covered bubbles. They're topwater swimmers, so they would do really well with like a larger peaceful fish. That's a bottom dweller. That would work out very well in these tanks. They like to be the most dominating fish in the tank. There's another fish in here that's more dominant. They might seem to be off to themselves, but they're really very stressed. And when they're spawning, they'll actually embrace each other and they do their little dance. And as the eggs and sperm both drop, so the eggs are lighter than the water and they, and they float up towards the nest. And then the male will put each one in the bubble. So once the eggs are inside the bubble, the, at that point you usually probably would want to remove the female because he gets so territorial, not territorial, so protective and aggressive protecting those eggs that you might want to remove the female at that point. They could take anywhere between two to four days to hatch. I'm going to say once they hatch, the male really doesn't have that um, protectiveness of the eggs. It's almost like he's very protective of his bubble nest and eggs, not necessarily the fry. But he didn't hurt the fry. He doesn't bother with the fry. He was a little pissed off with the female. He was very aggressive towards the female. So we were setting up another tank so that we could remove the female and then they started acting fine again. So we left them be. We actually, when I first gave her these, there was two males and a female and we didn't realize there was, they were breeding and I had to remove the male because it, he was going to, even the female was aggressive towards that male. So it's not necessarily just the male that gets aggressive. They get very aggressive. But we're setting up a tank and getting it ready for all these babies to move out because I, I could tell that they want to spawn. She's starting to look like she's holding eggs. So I just think we have to remove all the babies. And then from the juvenile tank, we'll see if any of them are aggressive. Do we need to get their own tank? So that is my update on Katie's Paradise Fish and a little bit more information on what the Paradise Fish are. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.